Hi, I'm Chris Cook for City Lights on Novus TV, and today we are at the Museum of Anthropology. We're here to check out the Luminescence exhibit, and we have a very special guest to show us around. Can you tell me how important is this? You know, I've, I've, I've heard things being thrown around that it hasn't happened in Canada before. Uh, on a world scale, it's important, but can you tell me from your perspective why this is so important? Yeah. I think it's important for Canada. It's a first for Canada. Um, it's uh, also pro the first major exhibition, a kind of uh, blockbuster exhibition on silver. Uh, there's been a number of um, exhibitions that have circulated around the world, Paris, Vienna, Madrid, uh, New York, on the gold of Peru. Um, but there were also huge numbers of silver pieces that were found in the same excavations that the gold came from. And these haven't received the same kind of um, public exposure. So this is really something quite um, quite new. Um, also we've looked at it um, from the point of view of light. What's interested us is the uh, ability of silver to reflect light and from that once we start moving a little bit away from silver and look at the light reflective qualities it means that we also in the 18th century, nine, uh, 17th, 18th century we get to look at um, paintings that were painted by indigenous people people using silver paints and gold foil and you'll see that same kind of luminescent light emitting quality in the colonial period right up to today so this ability of materials to reflect light to look as if they're emitting light is a really kind of basic aesthetic category if you like artistic category of Andean thought. So as you can see, we're extremely lucky to have Dr. Anthony Shelton here to show us some of his pieces. So how do you feel about uh, showing some of your favorites in the luminescence? Shall we, go, shall we go to the gallery? I would love to, yeah. So here we are at the beginning, huh? what, do you, uh, what do you want to start off with? So the exhibition is about light. So everything is displayed and lit in order to bring out that kind of reflective quality of the metal. Begin with three uh, headdresses, and these are made of gold. The gold associated the owners of this, the Inca ruler, with the sun and the power and the authority of the sun. Made this uh, powerful association with the deity from whose the power of the, of the Inca ruler uh, was thought to derive. And I just want to say that um, the tunic that you see here, there are two tunics like this in the exhibition. These date to around about the uh, 1400s, 1300s or 1400s. Um, there are only three in existence that have been discovered, so it was a really extraordinary that the Peruvian government actually lent both two of those three to us. Similarly with the gold headdresses, the level of co cooperation with the government uh, to bring this exhibition here has just been fabulous and I think it'll be a long time before you see this kind of, um, this collection brought together uh, again. So we've walked past some beautiful pieces, but uh, you wanted to show us the, uh, the angels. Angels exercised a particular hold over the Andean imagination. Um, the Inca uh, traced their descent from different bird clans and I think when Christianity arrived this idea of winged human beings captured that imagination. It was also a kind of Christianity that emphasized that was tinged with mysticism, Jewish mysticism and Christian mysticism. Ideas about birds were considered to be either good or evil depending on their species. So all this kind of came together I think in, this, uh, in these incredible cults of angels. Here we have um, depictions of angels from the 17th century um, to the 18th century, all made by indigenous people. Behind them is a painting showing the different levels of heaven with three levels, each level composed of 40, 50 um, different angels, each one representing a different power. These weren't necessarily beneficial angels, they were the army of Christ. They were armed angels and you sometimes see them with arquebuses and other weapons uh, ready to fight the forces of evil. So I, I had to see this piece. Uh, the marine nerd in me saw this online already but I've got to tell you it, uh, it's much more impressive in real life. Yeah. It's spectacular. This section is on contemporary Peruvian silver workers. There is about a 3,000 year old history of working metals and silver in Peru. After 1821, after independence, um, that tradition some went into decline 
and started to emerge again in about the mid 20th century, a foundation called the Patronato de Plata, uh, who we worked very closely with in this exhibition. has been working for 20 years to restore interest, to, um, to facilitate, to encourage uh, a new generation of artists to emerge. Every year they have a competition, and this is one of the competition winners from a few years back. Um, it shows a spondyla shell. It's absolutely stunning the way it opens up into, and you see a smaller shell. But what we also wanted to emphasize was not just the beauty, but also the influences on today's artists. And we talked about um, the Inca period and the civilizations that came before the Inca. You know, we looked at how that kind of fascination with luminosity survived through the colonial, the Spanish colonial period. But it's still there today uh, as a fragment, uh, uh, as a kind of uh, part of that popular national imagination of what it is to be Peruvian, of the history of Peru. So the spondylus, for example, we talked about the moon. The spondylus was a manifestation of the moon in the sea. Um, itself, it was considered to be a god, a powerful god. There have been discovered necklaces of um, spondylus shells made of silver and made of gold. Um, it was also considered to be the divine food of the gods. Um, so all these memories of uh, the pre-Columbian period still are there as a kind of a sediment which uh, influences creativity today. We came up to see the Luminescence exhibition and I have to say we were extremely lucky to be shown around by Dr. Shelton but you have to get up here yourself to see the true beauty of each and every piece. I've had a great time, I hope you have too. Please come out and check it out, you're only missing out if you don't. It is on until December the 16th. Check out the website for the Museum of Anthropology if you want to see anything else. I'm Chris Cook, signing out for Nervous TV.